Right now on News 5 at noon, how a local fire department is helping firefighters in Ukraine stay safe battling fires. Plus, how a national grant is helping a local police department improve public safety. And we'll tell you about the controversy one Virginia woman is facing with her cake pop business. From WCYB, this is News 5 at noon. We're taking a live look over Churchill in Tennessee. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for News 5 at noon. I'm Andrew McClung filling in for Preston today and we begin things first in the Weather Center with David Boyd. David, another cold day, but rain could be potentially on the way again this mm -hmm. week, especially some really heavy stuff and winds tomorrow. And gusty winds and much colder air after that. At least we have some quiet weather through today. Temperatures are not too bad. We're now in the 40s in the Tri-Cities. In fact, all the way up to 48 in Elizabethan, but it's near 40 in Gate City, 30s in Wise and also in Marion, near 30 up on Beach Mountain. A good deal of sunshine over northeast Tennessee and southwest Virginia. We're starting to see some showers showing up south and west of Nashville. That's with our next weather maker coming in after midnight tonight. So for today, increasing clouds, but it's going to be warmer than yesterday, a high of 52, a little breezy, wind out of the southeast, 5 to 15 miles an hour during the day, but becoming windy tonight as that rain moves in around and after midnight. So here's the future radar starting at 11 p.m., still dry, but notice as that moisture moves in by 2 o'clock, rain in the Tri-Cities, a wintry mix to the east in North Carolina, northward into Grayson County. That'll change over to rain later Tuesday morning. Periods of rain heavy at times on Tuesday is going to be a soaker for the morning and midday then tapering off late windy conditions especially mountains and foothills of East Tennessee and North Carolina where a high wind warning is in place localized gust over 70 miles an hour a wind advisory for much of Southwest Virginia for gusts near 50 and we can see gusts near 40 miles an hour in the Tri-Cities there's the winter weather advisory for late tonight through Tuesday morning North Carolina mountains and Grayson County for that brief mix or snow before it changes over to rain and a flood watch now in place for Avery, Mitchell, and Yancey counties in North Carolina for all of Tuesday. Coming up in a few minutes, more on this system, how much rain we are expecting, plus a change over to snow showers Tuesday night into Wednesday, how much snow we could see then coming up. New at noon, the Washington County, Tennessee Sheriff's Office says a man is in custody following an assault on Friday. According to a release from the Sheriff's Office, John Fry is charged with aggravated domestic assault. Authorities say deputies were sent to a call involving a firearm at a home on Charlie Hicks Road on Friday. A woman at the house said Fry had threatened her with a gun during an argument. Police say they searched the home and found the gun and arrested Fry. He is currently in jail on a $10,000 bond and is due in court next week. And we're continuing to follow a story we first brought you on Friday. An investigation is underway in Lebanon after police found a woman with severe head trauma. According to police, officers responded to a wellness check at an apartment along George Ben Whited Road. Officers then found the woman inside. She was flown by helicopter to the hospital. Her condition remains unknown. Police are now investigating the incident as suspicious. State police and the Russell County Sheriff's Office are assisting the investigation. If you have any information that may help, contact the Lebanon Police Department. Also new at noon today, the Bristol, Virginia Fire Department has donated multiple pieces of retired protective equipment to firefighters in Ukraine. According to fire officials, the gear has exceeded its useful lifespan lifespan set by standards here in the U.S. The gear will be given to an organization called Mission to Ukraine, a group that helps get gear in good shape to Ukrainian fire departments. More than $100,000 in grant funding is headed to the town of Glade Spring. I spoke with town leaders who say it will help improve safety in the growing community. The town of Glade Spring Police Department is a small one. <laughs> with just three full-time officers. We're a lot busier than what a lot of people realize. And with just three people, and then, you know, me being the administrator plus doing patrol duties, it can get pretty rough. As a small department, the town has relied on other area law enforcement agencies to provide 24-hour-a-day police protection. The sheriff's office and the state police have been great to work with about helping us when we didn't have anybody or backing us up when we, you know, because a lot of times I just have one person. But uh, we're wanting to lift that to where it's not such a burden where they're just coming to help us. That prompted Police Chief Noah Horn and town leaders to apply for a COPS grant from the Department of Justice. 
to add another full-time officer. Anytime when you come home, which is what Glade is to so many people, they, they need to feel safe when they come home. And so adding another officer, I really feel like should give people that reassurance that we're doing the best we can to make home as safe as we can. And recently, town leaders got the big news they were hoping for. $123,000 to add another full-time officer. The biggest thing is the extra person just don't give us more coverage. Somebody for Glade Springs don't be out more. Which in turn, police say could reduce response times by not having to call another agency. That could be the difference in life and death for some people, depending upon the type of call. It makes us feel real good that we're going to be able to offer our, our community, the people we serve, that, uh, that service. Chief Horn says he's thankful to local and state leaders that were a big part of the process and helping the police department get the grant. With the 24-hour policing, Chief Horn says the police department next steps are to become accredited. For more information on how to apply for the position, you can visit our website, WCYB.com. A section of Industry Drive in Kingsport will be closed this week as contractors work on the city's sanitary sewer system. The temporary closure will impact a section of the northbound lane from Wheatley Street to Brickyard Park Drive. The construction zones will be marked by signs and directed by an automated flagger device. The closure will begin today and continue through January 13th. And we have some big news to update you on. A big win for a local high school marching band. Dobbins Bennett High School in Kingsport is a winner in the Metallica Marching Band competition. The school won both the large high school division and the fan favorite award for high schools. The winners were just announced last night. The competition included more than 450 schools across the country who performed Metallica's music in a marching show. Winners were then picked through professional judges and a fan vote with Metallica members making the final call. Dobbins Bennett will receive free music equipment valued at $25,000. A popular drive through coffee shop has opened another location in our region. Seven Brew Coffee is now open in Elizabethan. It's located on Elk Avenue. The location had a soft opening over the weekend and is now open to everyone. The coffee shop offers thousands of flavor combinations. We're all about cultivating kindness. That's our big thing. Um, we're, it's, we got loud music. We're fun. We got really tried to hire a lot of people from the community, so we're really excited to get to dive in. Yes, we're all about community or creating a space for everyone to feel, feel welcomed and loved and appreciated. The NTSB releasing new information after a piece of a plane flew off during a flight. Their safety recommendations next. And a government spending deal has been reached for the full year. We'll break down some of the big numbers next.